Ain't nothing better than this Uh, yeah Yeah, ain't nothing better than this The recording has started Recording has started What's up, y'all? Recording has started We're Recording has started What up, y'all? Another episode of Mangela We out here in Vegas, baby We living it up It's what time is it? 9.44 a.m. And this is the start of... It's 9.44 a.m. in Las Vegas, Nevada. This Today's is... highs are 57 oh and a lows of 33. This is going to be the first... That was of... a really... Pause for a really great radio voice. Yeah, baby, you did good. Was, was that good. not really... Was Come a really on, good you voice. Guys. I'm with you. But this is the start of a road trip driving all the way to Nashville that we're going to be doing. And... Uh, this was the first stop. We stayed here for three days, and we're we're doing no kind of schedule. We're just doing our thing, going whichever the way the wind blows, and I'm so excited. We still got we a long did, way to go. We did add an extra day here in Las Vegas. Yes, tell them why we added another day. Because um, I got an audition that was a live Zoom audition with producers of a pilot. Uh, for those who don't know what a pilot is, that is the very first episode of a new TV show that will hopefully get picked up and go on air, go on TV. A lot of pilots don't make it to TV. They just get filmed and then disappear. Um, so anyways, it's pilot season. So I got a lot of auditions coming to my inbox. And this one was with producers live on Zoom as opposed to just filming myself and sending in the tape. Um, <clears throat> Which is a good thing, because once you go to producers, it's usually yeah. the second or third step you get. Yeah, so once you're with producers, the next step is you test for the role and either book it or don't. So um, we were supposed to be on the road. My appointment was 5.30 p.m. And we're like, well, if we start driving, I we're not guaranteeing that we'll be at our next hotel by 5.30 to jump on this audition. So we stayed here an extra day just so I could do this audition at 5.30. So I spent the whole day learning my lines and at 5.30 got on Zoom and waited and waited. For a freaking hour. And waited for over an hour. Oh my God. And I'm texting my managers and my agents like hey am i on the right zoom link because i've just been waiting in like zoom wait room abyss and nobody's come to me i didn't audition until 7 30 p.m that night and um i did good i did it one time and they're like that was so funny thank you and i'm like oh my god this took me 43 seconds to now do. the whole time I, she's waiting i'm getting upset yeah. i'm getting mad i'm getting agitated because i don't like obviously she stayed in, okay, this, like, she stayed in all day to work on this, this audition, the past two days, and I've been out just, you know, exploring Vegas by myself, and me seeing the work that she's doing, I'm getting upset because I'm just like, man, she's putting in work, we changed our plans, you know, we spent extra money just to be here for this audition, and... She's waiting for an hour and a half to get on. So I'm waiting patiently at the computer, and and then I hear Manny from the bed over there going, "What the f, babe?" <laughs> like so mad. You're still waiting. What the f? And I was like, "Babe, stop sending me your negative energy right now. I'm trying to stay positive about this." And he's yes. like, "Sorry, I'm getting upset for you." Look, and this brings the point of what I want to talk about. You know, I think. There are times in relationships where things uh, don't always go the way you want them to go, and you gotta t you gotta throw uh, how do you say you gotta you gotta throw audibles out. You know, we were supposed to leave at a certain time, we didn't. We ended up staying, spending extra money because my queen is chasing the dream. And I know it's a a figurative uh, lesson that I'm trying to learn, but. I think in life, there are going to be times when you're going to have to make sacrifices for things that the other person wants that wasn't a part of your plan that's going to it's gonna make you maybe spend a little extra time, maybe spend a little extra money, maybe spend a little extra focus, but it's all in the name of the other person trying to accomplish what it is that they're going for. And here's the thing. I didn't even want to stay and do it. I was like, it's at 5.30, and Manny was like, well, what? oh, that's Bonzo saying hello. Manny was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, let's just go. I won't I won't be able to do it. I'll just see if they could see me at another time, and if not, then we just won't do it. 
And Manny was the one that was like, what? No, like you're going to give up an opportunity to meet with producers because you don't want to change your plans. And in my mind, I was like, we're, we just started this trip and we're already changing our plans. I am the one in the relationship that's not really good with like throwing a wrench in things and like switching things up last second. I'm, I'm like, er, nope, I had plans. Sorry, I'm robot. This is how things work. Um, but we did it and I'm glad we did. And um, there's been a lot going on, just different things and anxiety has definitely um been infiltrating my mind and my body and um just lots of moving parts in our lives right now um lots of things that don't have answers but are up in the air and are you speaking are you speaking very vague on purpose yeah, because yeah, yeah i am <laughs> i don't know why well okay so i i don't know why i was doing that yeah i don't know either you're like saying um, a whole bunch of figurative stuff <laughs> I auditioned for this movie, this really big movie, and I'm waiting to hear if I book it. And I have been waiting for over a month now. If I book this movie, all of my plans for the rest of the year change. And if I don't book this movie, then I go um, back on the road and do some stand-up shows, which is going to be great because I'm writing new material. But all of that could go away if I book this movie. And I just don't know what's going to happen. So that is something I, I'm not good at being in limbo. But at the same time, when we first moved out of our house and I was talking on Instagram, if you guys follow me on Instagram, and I did a couple Instagram lives where I was talking about we are moving into a season of surrendering my comfort and security we could have sold our home and jumped right into the next home but instead we moved into limbo for two months staying in an airbnb and i was aware that this next season we were jumping into was kind of a season of limbo it was a season of not having a sense of security a sense of stability a sense of this is our plan and this is what's going to happen everything is up in the air and that is something that is stretching me and growing me and while i'm stretching and growing anxiety comes in and and it starts welling up inside and i was on facetime with my friend the other day and i can feel it when it just needs to burst and finally it burst and I just kind of had a breakdown moment, but it felt so good afterwards after I like got all the anxiety out in the form of tears and um, just talking it out with my friend. And I really felt a lot better afterwards. I, I felt relieved and I felt capable because once... Um, the anxiety sets in, then I don't want to do anything. I'm like, I don't want this audition. I don't want that audition. Forget it. I don't want to do this. Uh, I was even considering maybe I should just fly home and just be home so I can have like a sense of security. Let me just fly home. But that that is anxiety speaking. That's my anxiety talking, wanting to like bow out and be like, forget it. I don't want to do anything. But then that's such dangerous ground because that's when you let your anxiety keep you stuck and there are people in that situation that are stuck in their home that are stuck in a job they don't want or not attempting their dream because anxiety keeps them locked in and I didn't want that to happen in my life so it was I was very grateful that I had a friend to um, burst open to and walk it out talk it out and pick my bootstraps back up and be like okay no and then flip the switch and thank the anxiety and I started to thank my anxiety for showing me that I am talented and that I am gifted so much so that I have all these opportunities coming my way that I have all these auditions coming my way so what felt overwhelming like oh I have to do this audition I have to memorize these lines I have to memorize these lines I have to do it by 5 30 I have to do this and that and it's like no actually thank you anxiety for reminding me that I'm I'm talented so much so that I have all of these opportunities on my plate so thank you and just flipping the script on my relationship with anxiety yeah that's beautiful babe Thanks, that's a mother. lot of self-reflecting yeah. and um I love that because I get to be a part of it all 
And you helped me this weekend because I did some self-reflecting. I learned two things this weekend. One, and I'm staring at the camera because we got to stare at the camera when we talk, babe. Oh, I thought, one, okay. Um, one thing I learned. I thought we talked to each other. We do. We talk to each other and then I then we stare at the camera too. Okay. Just so that they can see us. <laughs> one thing I learned was my babe called me out because I was answering somebody on Instagram in a way that sa- seemed offensive and on the Knights page. Uh, I don't really, you know, the whole idea is people get their own voice. They're able to express how they feel, even if they disagree with what we say. And so if I come off sounding defensive, it's not a good thing. So I went back, deleted my comments and, um, and it's always tough to be corrected You know, uh, I don't like being corrected, but at the same time I do because correction leads to wisdom. So I'm grateful that you did that. So I am learning that when you, when you offer up something like our podcast and nights at the round table and the entire thing is based on everybody having a voice, then you have to be okay with the voices that disagree with you as well as people that agree with you. Because the whole point of this thing is to open space for people who may have differing opinions, maybe live in different kind of lives. And so it really did kind of put me in check and like, hey, man, this is an open space, even for people who don't agree with you, who may not like you or whatever. And that's cool. So I need to extend that same respect that I I would hope people extend to me. So that's something that I learned, which is difficult because you want to make, you know, anybody who doesn't get what you're doing or or who has a negative thing to say about what you're doing, you want to come back at them and and say something. (laughs) You want to defend yourself. But it's just not necessary all the time. And then the second thing was when I was out at the outlet shopping, I heard my boy uh, on the radio, and he's kind of like blown up. And it's this dude that uh, at one point, you know, I was helping him on his career, and then all of a sudden he blows up, and he's just massive right now. Not a household name, but he's massive. And I laughed because I came home and I was like, babe, sometimes you just got to be okay with the fact that there are people that do it better than you do. And it wasn't, I don't know if it was a lesson that I needed to learn, but you know, in, in there are times where you're doing stuff and you put your effort into something and you want to be great at it, right? And you think you're good. You think you're doing stuff that's good, but you realize, oh, there's other people <laughs> that are passing me, Right. And as Christians, we want to say stuff like, well, this is, you know, but it's okay because God's will for my life and, and yada, yada, yada. And I, and I believe that stuff. I do. But then there's also times to just admit there are people that are more talented, smarter, and just better at what you do than you. And there was something humbling in that because instead of looking at somebody and being angry or, or judgmental or uh, jealous or any of that stuff, Sometimes it's just like, this person is just better than me. They're just better. The yeah. dude could just rap better than me. And that's just it. It's like, there's no like and There's secret. always someone better. And exactly, exactly. But I think there's times where I just want to, I don't know, uh, nurse my ego and just make excuses. Mm-hmm. But that day I was like, no. I'm listening to this person and I'm like, this dude is dope. He is for sure a better rapper than I am. And it kind of felt freeing to say that because it's like, don't compare yourself to people who are just maybe better. Don't compare yourself, period. At all. Also, when you are falling into that comparing, being honest with yourself. It's good to be honest with yourself. This person, yeah. They are way more talented than me. Like sometimes I look at Michael Jordan and I'm like, man, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, not the other day, this morning. I was thinking of his son who went to UCF to play basketball. And his son is not Jordan. He has the last name, but he's not Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I thought about his son and how he walks around and there's probably not a day in his life that goes by that he does not see his dad on somebody's clothes. Wow. That Jordan sign. Mm-hmm. on somebody's clothes or on their shoes and he has to think that's my dad mm-hmm. like that's my dad right and i feel like there's a sense of pride there because mm-hmm. who else gets to say that mm-hmm. you know maybe the kids are the owner of nike like anytime they see a swoosh they're like 
it's my dad mm-hmm. you know but I, I i i think i believe i was i was trying to channel his emotion and like thinking i want to be like my dad i want to be like my dad i want to be great like my dad and there's a difference between wanting and then doing i could want to be jordan all day long but do i really want to put in the jordan work you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. do you really want to do what what these people that you may envy or idolize do like do you really really want their life and when i think about it the more i think about it when i start comparing myself to people nine times out of ten i don't want their life Mm -hmm. i don't want I don't, and Sinbad said it once. He's like, you just want their money. Mm-hmm. You don't want their life. You just want yeah, their money. That's true. You just want to skip the hard work and just get their money. I, I want like, Kevin Hart money. I don't want Kevin Hart life. It's, it's that a, guy is so hardworking. I do not envy that hard work. I'm like, you go on with your bad self. Enjoy your millions upon millions from your work. I will enjoy I know. I, I follow Mark Wahlberg and that fool just posted today. 2.30 a.m. club, work hard, be purposed. This fool's up at 2.30 with six other people. Hey, you. And nah. here I am being like, you know what? It's hard to ke- get muscles at 40, you know? <laughs> and he, this fool is like shredded at 40 something, just doing the work. And I'm here like, no, nah, guys, I don't think I want to be. It's just it's just too hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark, War- he, well, he works harder than me and he wants it more than me, period. Mm-hmm. And don't get us wrong, we work hard, but there's like being honest with yourself about you don't want their life, you want their money or it's, you want their whatever. But I think it's more so being honest. Hard I think it's more honest with your limitations. Be honest with your limitations. Be honest with the with the drive oh, yeah. that you have, the work ethic. Just be honest. Oh my with god, yourself. I am well aware that my capacity is not that of a Kevin Hart. I, I can't, my multitasking skills are below average. And well, just your anxiety levels, you know, you I get know. three things on your plate and you're feeling the weight of it. And that's tough. It's not, it's not, not everybody's built like that, but it's better to just acknowledge. How did I'm I get not built like that? How did I get here? <laughs> how did you get where? <laughs> to this place in life. Like, I don't think I always had anxiety. I don't know what it is. I had it when I was touring. I used to always think that people were going to, they didn't want to see me sing. Even though they're hiring me, they're paying me to come out. I always used to think, man, they're not going to want to hear me sing. They don't want to hear what I have to say. And it, I would feel that all the way until I hit the stage. And then when I hit the stage, I would come alive. But I would hate getting on the plane. I hate getting, I hated it. I hated it. So weird. But I'm grateful I did it. Yep. Grateful. I'm grateful that you do it. Thanks, lover. I love you, queen. Love me, lover. Well, we're signing out from the Venetian in Vegas. Now we're headed to Sedona. We're going to drop uh, Mangela on every city that we're at, talking about the things that we've learned during our brief stay at each of these cities. And uh, we're uber grateful that you guys are going to come along for the ride. So we love you guys. This is Mangela signing out. <laughs> Ten four.